of pyruvate and the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Pyruvate was produced as the end product of glycolysis and this pyruvate may get converted into lactate in the anaerobic glycolysis or this pyruvate may get converted into acetyl-CoA that is in the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex or this pyruvate is acted upon pyruvate carboxylase enzyme that is in the gluconeogenesis or it may take part in the glucose alanine cycle. So now let us see what are the fates of pyruvate. The first one is oxidative decarboxylation. The pyruvate dehydrogenase is the enzyme irreversibly converts pyruvate which is the end product of the glycolysis into acetyl-CoA which is a major fuel for the citric acid cycle and the building block for the fatty acid synthesis and this is an important pathway in tissues with a high oxidation capacity or oxidative capacity such as cardiac muscle. And the second fate if you see here the carboxylation of pyruvate to oxaloacetate by pyruvate carboxylase. This is the biotin dependent step or reaction. It is important because it replenishes the citric acid cycle intermediates and provides substrate for the gluconeogenesis to take place. And the third one is reduction of pyruvate to ethanol which takes place in the microorganisms that is the decarboxylation of pyruvate by the pyruvate decarboxylase occurs in yeast and certain other microorganisms but not in the humans. The enzyme requires uh, thymine pyrophosphate as the coenzyme and catalyzes a reaction similar to that of described in the pyruvate dehydrogenase and next is the conversion of pyruvate to alanine. The pyruvate can be transaminated to form amino acid alanine and the enzyme involved is alanine aminotransferase which requires pyridoxal phosphate PLP as the cofactors. So this is what you need to know about uh, the fate of pyruvate and now let us discuss in detail about the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate. Pyruvate from the aerobic glycolysis enters mitochondria where it may be converted into acetyl-CoA for entry into the citric acid cycle if ATP is needed or fatty acid synthesis if sufficient ATP is present. The overall reaction catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is oxidative decarboxylation an irreversible oxidation process in which the carboxyl group is removed from the pyruvate as the molecule of carbon dioxide and the two remaining carbons become acetyl group of acetyl-CoA. So finally the pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA by means of pyruvate dehydrogenase and uh, this reaction is called as oxidative decarboxylation. So here the NADH formed in this reaction gives up a hydride ion with two electrons to the respiratory chain and this electrons transfer to the oxygen ultimately generate 2.5 ATP for one NADH molecule. And next is pyruvate dehydrogenase. The pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a multi-enzyme complex in which series of chemical intermediates remain bound to the surface of the enzyme molecules as the substrate is transformed into the final product. So what are the components of the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex? So the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is the multi-molecular aggregate of the three enzymes E1, E2 and E3. E1 is a pyruvate dehydrogenase which is also called as decarboxylase. E2 is called as a dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and E3 is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase. So E3 wherein each enzyme catalyzes a part of the overall reaction in the cycle. So the complex also contains two tightly bound regulatory enzymes that is pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase and pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase. What are the coenzymes of uh, this complex? The PDH complex contains five coenzymes that acts as a carriers or oxidants for the intermediates of the reactions. For example, E1 requires thiamine pyrophosphate from the vitamin thiamine that is B1 and the E2 requires 
the lipoic acid as well as coenzyme A and E3 requires FADH2 from riboflavin and NADH from niacin and the deficiencies of thymine or niacin can cause severe central nervous system problems because of the brain cells unable to produce sufficient amount of ATP via citric acid cycle if the PDH complex is inactive. And now let us discuss about how the spiroid dehydrogenase complex is regulated. So the cyclic AMP dependent PDH kinase phosphorylates and inhibits the E1 component of the complex whereas PDH phosphatase dephosphorylates and activates E1. So the kinase itself is allosterically activated by ATP, acetyl coenzyme A and NADH thus in the presence of these high energy signals the PDH complex is turned off. Pyruvate is a potent inhibitor of the pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase if concentrations are elevated even will be maximally active and calcium is considered to be a strong activator of the pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase stimulating E1 activity and plays an important role in the skeletal muscle where the release of calcium during the contraction stimulates the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and thereby energy production and the pyruvate dehydrogenase in the liver is activated by insulin whereas in the brain as well as the nerves the enzyme is not responsive to the hormones. So this is what you need to know about uh, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex as well as the regulatory steps.